Hello, everybody, and welcome. Today, we are going to be talking about a very important and one of my all-time favorite topics as gut health and how it relates to cardiovascular health. Here at Natural Heart Doctor, we're always working on improving longevity and your health span, not just your lifespan. So we always want to get to the 100-year heart, but we want you feeling good along the way, not experiencing any negative symptoms. We want you feeling young the entire time. So one way that we work on improving the health span is by identifying some of the undiscovered sources of inflammation and oxidative stress within the body and how that can relate to it. Because truly inflammation and oxidative stress are at the core of pretty much any disease, especially cardiovascular disease. So one of my favorite topics that we will be discussing today, I'm always happy to answer any questions about this because we find it time and time again, come up in patients labs, and we always have to revert back to gut health. So let me just get started here, pull up a slideshow. So I recently presented this to a group of practitioners, but I think that it's very important that we have accessibility to you as patients. So we have to educate everybody. There is no user's, user's manual for this human body. We have to know what's going on. We have to know how what we're doing affects us on a day-to-day -day basis. And if we're not fully enlightened, then how can we prevent any damage? So let's get started. As you may know, cardiovascular disease is the number one killer worldwide. Millions of people around the globe suffer from heart attack, stroke, art, arrhythmias, high blood pressure, coronary artery disease. So there are multiple numbers of how you can break that down of cardiovascular disease, but it is all encompassing and it affects one in three adults in the Western world. And despite conventional changes and just developing science, we are still not making a dent in this number. We know that the conventional approach continues to focus on a pill for every ill. And that if you come in and you've had a heart attack or you're feeling chest pain, or they run a coronary artery calcium scan, and they see that there's any calcification, what do they do? They put you on a statin. They give you some aspirin. They give you blood pressure lowering medication and it's artificial lowering of these symptoms and then essentially just watch and wait and it's waiting until that there's a further problem. So we really need to be better at the prevention side of things and staying ahead of them and looking for the cause rather than just suppressing symptoms. And that's really what we do here, of course. So it's not pharmaceutical deficiencies. It's not that you need a statin. It's not that you need a radiating calcium score to tell us what's going on with your arteries. We need to identify what's causing cardiovascular disease. Like I mentioned, inflammation and oxidative stress are at the core of coronary artery disease, high blood pressure, arrhythmias. And so it's really, we have to put on our detective hats and see what is it that's causing this inflammation and oxidative stress within the body. It can be by way of poor diet, an unhealthy lifestyle, environmental toxins, poor indoor air quality, solvent use in the home. Um, of course, stress, mental, emotional stress, physical stress, poor quality sleep, poor oxygenation. So there's any number of routes of ways that we can get inflammation and oxidative damage to our bodies but how it, we have to figure out what's going on within your body. And that's why it varies from person to person and every person requires a different treatment. So I wanna talk about the largest organ that is oftentimes unknown to many people. It's not an organ that we talk about often like the heart, but the vascular endothelium, the lining of the blood vessels. So it is just one cell layer thick. It has the area of six tennis courts. So it's a very large, of course, you've got roughly 60,000 miles of blood vessels in your body. So lining all of those is this vascular endothelium. And the vascular endothelium has the mass of five hearts. We know that the heart is actually a, a large amount of mass in the body. It's a mass of a muscular tissue. And the vascular endothelium has five times that amount of mass. So we must address that and protect it. So how do we do at the start of this? We would want to eat well, live well, think well. If we're not doing so, then we're identifying that there is, we're allowing the inflictions of inflammation, oxidative damage into our body. 
back to the pharmaceuticals that are always just, you walk into a conventional cardiology office or even your primary care office, and they're just going to write you, oh, you know what? Your cholesterol is elevated. Your total is over 200. Your LDL is over 100. Here's your stat, and you have to stay on it for the rest of your life. And that's basically what you're issued. There have been multiple studies recently showing the decreased barrier function, so immune function, barrier function within the intestines as it relates to statins. There have been multiple studies relating to the decreased mitochondrial function by way of statin drugs. And arguably most importantly, statin-induced diabetes that patients, you're not told, hey, your blood sugar may be elevated. You may be increasing your hemoglobin A1C just by starting this statin drug. So things that patients aren't told before they get put on this drug essentially for life. And these studies continue to mount the negative effects of them. This is a study which Dr. Wolfson has shared with me and has maybe shared with a bunch of you as well previously, but it's really important that we show that primary cardiovascular prevention, so if you've never had a heart attack or stroke, in older adults. So this study was done and published in JAMA. Physicians everywhere can read this and know this, but they don't often adhere to the, the new science, unfortunately. But this study shows that all-cause mortality was actually increased. This was patients over age 65. And 65% in, or 60, patients 65 and older in the primary prevention group, there was 1,400 people in each group there was 18% higher mortality. 18% higher mortality in the statin group than in the placebo group. Then we look further at the ages 75 and older, primary prevention, and there was a 34% higher mortality, death by any cause in the statin group. The only changes that they had was these patients were on statin and their all-cause mortality was increased by 34%. Again, Dr. Wilson shares this all the time. I hope that you've seen this graph before, and this is not news to you. Yet, everybody gets put on a statin drug. And that is a major cause of why we see so many patients, which is excellent. It's like a little red flag goes off internally saying, I was told that I need to take this statin, but I don't know if that sets right with me that I should just take this for the rest of my life. Because if that red flag goes off, you are exactly right. Every single cell in your body needs cholesterol particles. We don't want to just suppress the cholesterol, cholesterol manufacturing in your body. And then what about aspirin? Aspirin induced adverse effects on the small and large intestine. So we know that NSAIDs reduce the barrier function in the small and large intestine. So if we think about, it's a kind of cliche to say, but all healing begins in the gut. So if we're looking at these two drugs that are very commonly used, so statin drugs and aspirin, if you've been put on them and you are, you're never told, oh, you know what, you're going to be reducing your intestinal function by starting these drugs. And so this is where we look at the intestinal defense. So we've got just, again, the one cell layer thick. And then above that, we've got the defensins, which are some immune function. We've got this mucus, which is a physical barrier that's produced by the goblet cells in the intestines, also by way of the probiotic, the good bacteria producing mucus and there's some intestinal regulation by way of your beneficial bacteria as well. So we've got a physical buffer, we've got antimicrobial properties within the immune function, there are phospholipids, and then underlying all of that are your epithelial cells lining your gut. One cell layer thick, underneath that one cell layer is your bloodstream. So if we're thinking what's allowing inflammation and oxidative damage into my bloodstream, Leaky gut is a major contributing source. And so we think, okay, what might be hindering my gut function, my gut barrier? If you're eating foods that are not organic, you're ingesting herbicides and pesticides, you're killing off those beneficial bacteria that are helping regulate that physical mucus barrier. You're killing off all kinds of good beneficial things in your gut just by ingesting these poisons. And that's just one way. Otherwise, we couldn't be at ingesting harmful foods, mental emotional stress is really hard on our gut. So all kinds of things that can be contributing to leaky gut. This was a study that shows how high blood pressure really hinders the gut microbiome and the intestinal barrier system. So 
which came first, the chicken or the egg? Was it that the patients with high blood pressure wound up with high blood pressure because they had a leaky gut or vice versa? So again, we have to put on our detective hats. And again, if we're allowing things into the bloodstream, we can assume that there's going to be some level of immune upregulation, inflammation, and therefore high blood pressure. So if we just start stepping back, start putting that barrier system back up, stop allowing things into the bloodstream, that's one way of improving the hypertension. Lipopolysaccharides. So this is a component of the cell wall in the bacteria in your gut. And this is something that would be really, if it's in your gut, then that's one thing. But once it's allowed into the underlying bloodstream, so if there's leaky gut, these bacterial cells release their endotoxin, LPS. So this study shows that there was endothelial dysfunction. So again, back to the inside wall, that lining of the blood vessel, dysfunction of the endothelium, which can contribute to hypertension, can contribute to plaque formation, et cetera, endothelial dysfunction, vascular inflammation, and how the lipopolysaccharide pathway and how probiotics can help. So again, it gets a little sciencey. So if you want to nerd out on this, you can, uh, I've linked all of these studies, but again, I did present this to a group of physicians, but we've got some really well-read followers here. I think that you can handle all of this. Zonulin. Zonulin is a intermembrane protein that holds together neighboring gut cells. We got a study here that shows that the blood samples that contain zonulin, so serum zonulin levels, blood zonulin levels showed increased blood sugar, so higher levels of systemic inflammation, high blood pressure, and insulin resistance. So leaky gut and association with all of those disease states. Also decreased ejection fraction with this leaky gut marker. So how do we heal up the gut and how do we start putting back up that barrier system so we can protect the endothelium, so we can protect our blood vessels and our circulatory system as a whole? Eat well, live well, think well, and then we test and don't guess. So we can run your serum zonulin. That's what we do here. We test, we don't guess. And then once we find what's going on in your body, then we use those evidence-based supplements to prevent and correct those. So first and foremost, start with an organic whole foods paleo diet. Eliminate the gluten and grains, eliminate the alcohols, the, the herbicides, the pesticides, all of these poisons that are allowed into your body, foods that are hard for you to digest, keep them out, um, give your body something that it knows how to digest. And then back to the testing. So this is something that if you're a patient of mine, you've seen this panel run on you. This is something I run on almost every single one of my patients. So this is where we see we run zonulin and then immune markers of have your immune system been exposed to zonulin and lipopolysaccharide as well. So we run all of these markers on almost all of our patients. You want to know this information about you. You want to know if you have a leaky gut. Are you allowing things into your bloodstream that shouldn't be there? This is another way that we assess gut health is a stool analysis. So we see how are your beneficial bacteria? What's the level of bacteria in your gut? Is it a good kind of a diverse amount? Diversity in the gut is key to a flourishing probiotic. Um, we want all of these different functions from all of the vast array of good bacteria in the gut. We also run vascular inflammation markers. So if there's a significant amount of inflammation in the gut, you're going to have impaired gut function, of course. So now onto some of my favorite ways to treat. So should you find that you have leaky gut, these are some really great supplements that we can use. So butyrate, if you've got decreased amounts of bacteria producing butyrate, there are some good studies that show that the Gut fuel, which is my favorite source of butyrate, increases mucin production, so that mucus layer. And it actually has been shown to decrease the atherosclerotic plaque inflammation by macrophages in the bloodstream. Phosphatidylcholine is another excellent way to build up that mucosal lining, barrier function. Tudka, we want to support 
digestive health by way of liver and gall function. We see all of, there's studies associated with all of these improved barrier function, improved reperfusion and vessel repair. So better blood flow and vessel repair, increased nitric oxide production, decreased reactive oxygen species, and improved lipid ratios. Probiotics, these are a couple of my favorite probiotics that we carry. This is balanced biotic, and we can see that these are some really beneficial strains that have been associated with the endothelial health in particular. So there's, of course, so many different strains out there, but improving the barrier function, these are some of the best studied strains. And this balanced biotic and our heart helpers are two of my favorite gut healing probiotics that we can use to build back up the good gut diversity. And then beyond that, truthfully, food. So improving your intake of fermented foods. I believe that was the last slide before I, so I've got all these studies here. So if you're interested in diving a little bit deeper into any of those studies, but really circling back to the food as medicine piece, fermented foods, kimchi, sauerkraut, the kefir, kombucha, a low sugar kombucha, really keeping the sugars low and minimal in the diet. So these are all going to be focal at keeping the beneficial bacteria and not killing them off by excess sugars. Those are really just some straightforward, I could think kind of baseline supplements. But again, I would really focus on test, not guess. If you haven't had these labs run, call us. We can get these run on all of you immediately. You, these are things that you want to know. If you don't already know if what your levels of inflammation and oxidative stress are, start there. And then we can see, all right, if you talk to one of us here at Natural Heart Doctor, then we can say, all right, here's what testing might be indicated with you. Should we do some blood testing? Should we do some stool analysis? What kind of further testing can we do to figure out what needs to be done for you to prevent and reduce Reverse your inflammation and oxidative damage so that you can prevent or correct cardiovascular disease for you and for your family. So knowledge is power. We want to know these numbers and we're here to help. So if you have any questions about any of the topics that I have discussed today, please feel free to reach out, leave some comments. I hope this was really helpful for all of you and I hope that you took something away from it and have a wonderful day. Thank you.